Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our daily devotional from First Presbyterian Church. Actually, I'm Pastor Steve Quinlan, and I'm coming to you from my study at home this morning. These devotional messages throughout the season of Lent are based on the Revised Common Lectionary readings for the day. And today's reading comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 60. Before we read, let's pray. Our God, we greet you this morning and thank you for shedding your light in our lives. We pray that you will bless this time that we spend together in devotion around your word and in prayer. May your spirit open our hearts and minds to hear your truth this day. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The lectionary reading for today is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 60, and I'm going to read starting at verse 17. Listen now to God's word. Instead of bronze, I will bring gold. Instead of iron, I will bring silver. Instead of wood, bronze. Instead of stones, iron. I will appoint peace as your overseer and righteousness as your taskmaster. Violence shall no more be heard in your land. Devastation and destruction in your borders. You shall call your walls salvation and your gates praise. The sun shall no longer be your light by day, for the brightness of the moon will no longer give you light by night. But the Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Your sun will no longer go down or your moon withdraw itself. For the Lord will be your everlasting light, and your days of mourning shall be ended. A beautiful passage of scripture, a prophecy brought by Isaiah to the people of Israel as they were in a kind of political captivity and bondage but it certainly is appropriate for all of us as we consider our lives from day to day and as during this season of Lent we reflect upon our own bondage, the captivity that we experience, mainly our captivity to sin and those habits of thought and life that hold us back and that threaten us and keep us down. The prophet tells the people of Israel that their light shall no longer be generated by the sun during the day, nor the moon during the night, but their light shall be generated by the presence of God among them. You know, light is a common metaphor in the Bible. A metaphor is one thought or idea that stands for another. And most often the metaphor of light represents truth. And so in many ways this passage is telling us that there's a way of perceiving truth which is ordinary and natural. But then there's also a way of perceiving truth that comes from God. We remember that Jesus, who is the light of the world, told us that he was the way and the truth and the life, and that no one can experience the presence of God and enter into God's presence without following in his way, without walking in his light. The light of the Lord, the truth of God, needs to be our guide at all times. 
It needs to show us the, the path that is before us. That's often darkened by our natural senses, but illuminated brightly by the presence of God, by God's truth. And God's truth, of course, is embodied in our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the truth. You know, one of the remarkable things about this passage in the prophet Isaiah is that it begins with the prophet talking about substitutions. He says that instead of wood, there will be iron. Instead of brass, there will be gold. That is something better, something more perfect, something more enduring, substituted for something inferior, something that is given to us instead. And I think we can learn a lot from that, that instead of thinking of ourselves and those around us, instead of thinking of our world in ordinary, natural ways, we need to cultivate a way of thinking about our world and our lives that places Christ at the center instead of us. Jesus Christ is our righteousness, our peace, our strength. And what's important this day is that when we think about ourselves, we think not first of our weaknesses, not first of our failings and our inferiorities, and we all have plenty of those, but think first in the light of God, of Jesus the Christ, who takes our place not only on the cross of Calvary, but takes our place, as it were, in the presence of God, at the right hand of God, so that as he is, the Apostle John says in his first epistle, so are we in this present world. When God looks at the Lord Jesus Christ, when God looks at his only begotten Son, he sees not only Jesus of Nazareth, but he sees you and he sees me. He sees us as we truly are in the light of his love. He sees us in Jesus Christ, who is our light and our life. This is, in fact, what it means to walk in the light, to live in the truth, to let Christ be our life not only our companion and our friend who walks alongside of us, for of course Jesus does that, but to be the one who shines forth within us in the presence of God, who represents us, who is instead of us. Not that we disappear or go away. We are who we are, but in the consciousness of our God, in the presence of our God. It is Christ who is our life. Christ who is the one who is revealed in and through us. What a beautiful thought for us to begin with on this day, to recognize that though, of course, we live in a land of dark shadows, though, of course, we see ourselves in the reality of our weakness and failing, that through the eyes of faith, through the light of God, which is brighter than any sun, brighter than any moon, that we shine with the presence of Christ. Let us pray together. Lord God, this day, we thank you. that You are our light and our life, that you shine brightly, not only in and through us to the world around us, but that in your light, in your truth, in the presence of God, we are as Christ is. Help us to keep that in our minds this day and embrace it with our hearts. Lord God, we also pray in this day for all of our friends, for all of our family, for our community, for our nation, our state, for all of those who are suffering with illness this morning, for those who are feeling frightened and anxious, for those who are lonely, 
separated from friends and from loved ones. Lord God, embrace us all this day. Hold us close to yourself. Fill us with your peace and your joy. We pray as we do every day during this difficult time for the leaders of our communities, of our state and nation, and around our world, for those who must make what are often life and death decisions. We know that it's not easy to be in positions of leadership. We ask that you will give them great wisdom and great courage to act for the common good. That's always our prayer, O oh God, that those who lead would act for the sake of the many and not for the sake of themselves or a privileged few. Throughout the remainder of this day, O oh Lord, keep us mindful of your light and your truth, which transcends all other light, which is the truth, the way in which we must walk on a daily basis. Help us to see ourselves as you see us, our God, and in turn, to look at others that way and to see your presence in them. Bless us all. Keep us safe. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Thanks for joining with us this morning. We'll be back again tomorrow. On Thursdays, we're going to uh, record a little bit more fulsome message and prayer time. Uh, that will be done in our uh, sanctuary, and that will appear a little later in the day uh, than uh, these devotionals. So God bless you and keep you. And have a wonderful day. Thanks for tuning in.